Hello everybody, my name is David and welcome to The Bridge. And guess what? You've been gambling wrong and we wanna fix it. And today's episode is quite literally about how to maximize your experience at the casino. I have talked and worked with so many people. And over the, core, over the last five years with Casino Quest, we have really been interacting with a lot of players. We've been hosting about 1,200 players a month uh, through our various programs and teaching people how to play. And what we found is a lot of people do a lot of the same things. A lot of it is from just a lack of information, a lack of emotional awareness, not understanding how a budget works, not understanding even how the casinos work, the rules of the game. So what we did is we put together the bridge. Uh, and really the bridge is just an acronym. It stands for budget, risk, identify, destination, goal, and emotion. And in this show, I'm gonna break those all down. And I hope to empower you to maximize your next casino experience. And if you stay tuned at the very end, we have this sort of live workshop that we're, that, that's gonna be taking place as well. So if you'd like to participate in that, but we're gonna focus on you and helping you understand what the bridge is all about. So the bridge is intended to kind of feed into whether you're a novice, you're a beginner, you're an intermediate, you're an expert, you're a pro. I've been a dealer for 34 years. I promise you that I still don't know everything about crap. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I learn things, I learn new things all the time. Now, can you imagine you're a player and you're learning a game for the first time? There's so many parts of the game uh, to learn. There's so much about the etiquette, there's so much about the odds, and quite honestly, most people come to Vegas without a clue. They have an idea of a game they play, maybe you go on YouTube, you watch some of our videos, you read a book, you, you know, and, and there's a lot of half-truths and mistruths. There's a lot of nonsense that, that persists throughout the YouTubeverse, let's just say that, okay? And you know, many times when people come here to Casino Quest to learn, we know we go through this process of fixing a lot of misunderstandings or helping to clarify at least how the tables actually work. And, and quite frankly, they work one way, right? And a lot of times people miss that, but it's not always about the tables or casinos, it's about you and understand how you can play better, how you can create a better experience for yourself. And that's what the bridge is all about. Let's, um, let's get to uh, just a, a basic understand the bridge workshop and really bridge. And, and what I'm gonna teach you today, it, it's, an, it's an ecosystem, it's an ecosystem, it covers everything. It's all about, it's education, it's profiling, it's tools and support to, get, to optimize uh, your gambling experience. And remember, it's not just about the wins, it's about the experience. Not everybody comes to Vegas to win money. That's not always the goal. Many people come to just have a social experience or to spend time or, you know, the, the goals, the, the ideas that they have in their head are very different. You know, a lot of people are very realistic. They don't, they don't come to Vegas and assume, you know, you look at city center and assume that all these casinos were built on winners. That's not true. We know that's not true. Right. So if you come very often, it's you have this realistic expectation of gambling is entertainment. And so you have a different outlook. Now, there are those of you that come and absolutely want to win a lot of money. And I promise that you're leaving a lot of money at the table. And here's the thing. I don't even have to tell you that's true. You know, it's true. You absolutely know that you were leaving a lot of money on the table because guess what? You know, it's true. You know, there are very few people that optimize the experience at the casino. It's just a fact. This is what Vegas looked like. This is a picture that this, this gentleman uh, posted uh, from 1991. And this is literally exactly what Vegas looked like when I, when I showed up. And, and at this point in time, the glitter goats that you see there was uh, just a slot parlor. But here is where I played my first $20 in Vegas. So I came to Vegas, I had a, I had a one-year-old son at the time, uh, and I, I had this very new experience. I was staying at this, uh, uh, I, I was staying in this, in this house, we were sharing this one little room, and I, I came down to the Glitter Gulch, and uh, I, I played $20, and I won $200, and there was this woman there trying to convince me to keep playing, but of course, given the situation I was in, needing to get diapers, food, and everything else, I, I really, luckily, I was able to walk with my money, and uh, you know, I left, I left the casino. So as I'm walking down the street, I ran into somebody who suggested I be a dealer. Literally, someone out on the street 
promoting a dealer school. And, and quite honestly, I mean, quite literally, that's how I ended up becoming a dealer. And uh, they, they asked me to say, hey, what are you doing? I had just arrived into town, but I, I started at dealer school. The Glitter Gulch was quite literally the first place I, I really walked into. And uh, that's kind of what jump started my career. And then after that win, of course, I ended up spending a little time downtown. Uh, but the first casino I ever worked was the Golden Gate in 1991 in a bird game. Now, since then, I've been a dealer, a supervisor, a gaming consultant, a trainer, uh, a dealer trainer, and, and a player trainer, of course. And, of course, a gaming entrepreneur, uh, me and my, my business partner, Alex, as you know, you know we, own the, when they, we own the dealer school here. Anyways, I've, I've been on every single side of this game that you can ever imagine. My life story, uh, if you're ever invest, interested, a lot of it's out there. But let's just say I have gone through the ups and downs of being a player. And now, here's a true story. David is up $10,000 for the year on Kino by doing gold tiers. It's in the workbook. All right, we'll talk about that later, but let's, let's move on. So the bridge is just an acronym. We're going to break down each one of these, and I'm going to help you understand how to bridge your experience with the casino. You see what I'm saying? Quite honestly, you know, you know what's crazy? I just want to share this with you very quickly, but I, I've been doing this a very long time. I spend most of my time thinking about ways that I can help improve a gambler's experience. I have had this class very specifically here at Casino Quest called Dice with David. So, you know, I work with people that play dice to help them sort of optimize their experience, create strategies around their budget and all these other things. But over the course of my career, I've had so many conversations with people who know they're not playing the game right or you know, can't match up their budget with their strategy, whatever the case is, or just don't understand the bets or just want to have, you know, gain some level of confidence. And so I have spent most of my career thinking about this. Early on in my career, I used to create these pressing sheets and I used to create uh, you know, a whole number of different like sort of resources that I would hand out to players to help them understand how the game worked, whatever it was, basic strategy sheets, pressing sheets, whatever the case is. And I've always wanted to do a real clinic. So we, we have these weekend clinics. They're, they're, they're just a few hours. We kind of take you through all the games and give you an introduction to the games. But, but even with that, it's, it's, it's not enough. It's not immersive enough. It doesn't deal with the real questions. It doesn't deal with the real sort of insight, the things that make gambling work for an individual. First is your budget. And let me be very, very clear. I took this bridge. I took our workbook. Let me reach over here and get it real quick. And, uh, and I shared it with a number of casino bosses. They loved it. They absolutely love it. And now what you're going to say to me is, David, but if you showed it to the casino bosses, doesn't that mean it's not a player-driven thing? No, no, it's 100% a player-driven thing because it's, we want you to engage in a very responsible way. That's how we want you to start. We want you to start with this mentality that you're bringing money that is for entertainment, that if you had to light it on fire in the parking lot, it's okay. And guess what? Casinos don't mind if you win. They don't want you to win all the money, but they don't mind if you play the game fair, you understand the game, and, and you play with a, a high level of empowerment. That's why they're there. You know, it, the, the good news is not everybody's going to go to our workshop, and there's going to be a lot of people who don't and just lose their money in droves and pay for all the bills, and that's great for them. We're only working with you, you see? And every single gaming boss I've, I've ever met, or, or that I've, the gaming bosses that I've introduced the, the bridge to, are very excited to see that we are engaging with a, a, a system, uh, with a workshop that is all about education, empowerment, and responsible gaming. Because uh, beyond that, it's fine. They're, they're happy to take the risk that you might win some money, right? And you might be able to maximize your experience. Now, hopefully, everybody will go through our workshop, and then maybe, maybe the uh, maybe the tie will turn a little bit. But okay. Uh, so, so the first thing is we want to be able to light it on fire, and I mean that very sincerely. The, the biggest thing that I've always found is a lot of remorse comes from you not looking at budget f as an entertainment. You know, if, if you're coming here with your hard-earned money that needs to go to rent or you're trying to leverage rent, which I have done. I mean, years ago, I used to be in this a situation where if I didn't have the rent, I was 20 or $50 off, just 20 or $50 away. I'd be like, well, I can't pay my rent. I might as well go gamble it. Uh, let's say I had $300 towards my $350 rent, just $50 away. I would be like, well, I might as well go gamble because I don't have the $350. 
So, you know, what's the difference between having be 50 less or 300 less? You follow? I might as well go. It was the, the wrong mentality. And of course, in every case, I, I, I would lose. Not every case. There were a few times I got lucky, but I would lose. And I would be much worse off and I would have this higher level of remorse. And now I have to borrow and, and, and scrape and, and it creates this whole other dynamic. So you got to be willing to light it on fire. And I mean that. I mean, if someone picked your pockets on the way into the casino, you would just walk away and go, ah, well, I guess I got I to gotta go home and have a TV dinner, you know what I mean? Or make a smoothie like David does. Okay, the next thing a lot of people don't do is they, they don't budget for the total number of sessions that they are here to play for. So many, many people, and we hear this, me and Alex especially, we hear this so often. People come to Vegas with X amount of money, they go up to the, the, the table, and now they chase, they're buying and... You know, two hours later, they've, they've lost all their money. They've literally, they're just, all they have left are credit cards to pay for dinner and meals, but they've, they've lost all of their casino budget in, in one session. You, you, you shouldn't do that. You, you should know what your sessions are. If, if you need five sessions, six, if you're here for three days, you know, budget for your, have a budget that takes into account each of the sessions uh, that you're going to play. Another one is you want to, your budget should match your strategy, right? Your budget should match your strategy. So if your budget is a thousand bucks for roulette, it should have a, a strategy that gives you opportunity and some flexibility to integrate. You shouldn't walk up to a table with a thousand bucks and just start firing away whatever. Or I'll be honest with you, a lot of YouTube strategies are a bit nonsense, right? They don't play into how the games really work. If you're watching a YouTube video that tells you that you can't stop winning or the game is like an ATM machine or they're just setting up for failure. That is not an equation for budget equals strategy, okay? So you need to be very realistic, understand first how the, how the games work, right? We'll get to that later. But have a budget that plays into reality, right? That's all, all about reality. Next one is uh, we don't want to chase the pocket. So when you think of a budget, we don't chase the pocket, and here's what that means. And this is what I've seen so often, it's just crazy. So let's say you walk up to a table, and you've budgeted $1,200 for your session, but you have a $300 strategy. That is $30 per bet, that leaving you 10 bullets, which just sounds, on the surface, sounds great. So you walk up, you have your $300, and you start playing your $300 strategy, that's $30 each time. You're investing $30 each time, 10 bullets, right? 10 times 30 is 300. Now you lose that. And you know what you do? You reach back into your pocket and you grab another $300 to chase your first $300 loss. And guess what you're doing? You're playing the same $300 strategy you started with, but here's what's happening. You're getting further and further. Every time you do that, you're getting further and further away from being able to even maximize or break even because you're chasing the same short money strategy you started with, which that, that had to be, you follow? And now, guess what happens? You're out 1,200 bucks, you've bought in four times, still playing the same $300. I, I will tell you, one of the most incredible experiences I ever had, uh, well, it wasn't that incredible, to be honest with you, but I'm sitting playing a five cent Joker poker machine, where you know it's got the Joker, so if you get five of a kind, that's the big sort of subordinate prize. Royal Flush still plays better, but five of a kind is fantastic, right? So I'm playing this Joker poker machine, and, and I started with $200 in my pocket. I had $200 in my pocket to play, and I was planning on playing all night. And you know, you could play a lot. Now, this was back when you bought rolls of nickels. You didn't actually feed the money in. You bought rolls. It was a lot of work. You had $2 for a roll. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was, it was a lot of work. Feed the nickels, press the button. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was a lot of work. Okay. So here I am. Next thing you know, I'm reaching into my pocket, and I got no more money. I'm literally out 200 bucks. Guess what the top prize of my five-cent machine was? $200. You see, now I have no opportunity to even, uh, well, I guess I could have break even if I, I didn't get the top prize, let's just say, but, but, I, but I stopped and, and I, I had so much remorse and I, I was so disappointed in myself for having invested $200 machine with the maximum potential of only breaking even, which the odds of me hitting the maximum potential were low. 
At that point, I needed a royal flush to win my bet. A royal flush would have given me $200. But these are the things that have influenced a lot of what I've done over the course of my life. You have, you have no idea how many times I have started on a penny machine and put in hundreds of dollars when what I should have done is just started on a quarter machine with the total bankroll I had to give me the opportunity I was looking for. Same thing goes for tables. Same thing goes for tables. You can't chase the pocket, okay? Here's another thing about a budget that we're gonna add this little addendum. There, those of you that talk about a stop loss, listen, what's ever in your pocket, that's the stop loss. If, you're, if you have a $300 budget and you say to yourself, well, I'm only prepared to lose half of it, then guess what? Only take half of it. Leave the other half at the house. Having a stop loss, all it does is take away from your risk profile, which we're going to get to next. So stop loss is silly. It's not the stock market. Whatever you have in your pocket, whatever cash you brought, whatever that meets the budget and the strategy and all those things, that's what you bring. That's what you play. Having this other mentality just takes away from that. So a stop loss is not a word that you want to really entertain on a crap table. Now, I, I, again, if, if you have $600 and you're prepared to only lose $300, well, guess what? Only bring $300. You know what I mean? Don't, don't put in your head this other mentality because here's what's going to happen more often than not is you're going to lack the discipline to walk away correctly right? You'll end up chasing a stop loss that becomes a thing. Or when you get close to your stop loss, you'll stop playing how you, you'll lose a discipline to play how you are. You, maybe you'll, you'll, you'll rein in, you'll be more conservative, but there's too many other things that sort of mitigate your relationship between you and your budget when you think of it as a stop loss dynamic. So just come with the money that you're willing to lose, leave everything else up in your room uh, or, or, or somewhere else where you can't get to it. Let's talk about the R, the risk. I, I can't tell you how important understanding your risk profile is. Not the other person, but your, everybody has a different risk profile. Everybody is looking for a different thing. Some people cannot tolerate the risk necessary to win a lot of money. But let's be clear, the first thing we're doing is we're lighting our money on fire, right? So we're not gonna worry about the money in the first place, but that doesn't mean when we start seeing the money and we start winning, there are some people who just can't get themselves to win enough money. It's just, it's crazy that way. I'll give you an example. I have a customer of mine who has, has been a fan of the channel for a long time and as wealthy as all sin. Could quite literally, and, and, and probably the reason why he's wealthy is because he has a low bridge problem. But he came out to Vegas and he's like, David, I want to play your you know, maximum risk strategy. I've got all this money to spend. We're going to go to the Bellagio. We're going to buy in for all this money. And we're just going to play it out because I can light the money on fire. But here's what happened. When we got to the actual table, me and Dennis went with him. He bought in for a ton of money. He started with this big fat bet on the table. And as soon as he started winning and the bets got to a certain level, he couldn't press them anymore. He could not let that money work for him. He could not maximize his wins. He had to reduce his bets or pull his bets. And so the strategy was no longer a thing. So realistically, he was working the wrong strategy because his risk profile, who he was, did not fit this strategy. And that's okay. That's okay. And, and, and the key really is understanding what your risk profile is, right? So if you're not someone then that can allow a bet to grow, then you know, you're, you're really someone who needs to find a strategy where you can grind for time, enjoy the game, and just you know, fit into that mode and have a wonderful experience and find an experience. And you'll still win. I'm not saying that you don't want to preclude yourself from winning. I'm just saying that going into a strategy that, is a, that, that requires a high risk tolerance, not for him, right? So we should have started with something different that was more reflective of who he was specifically. Now, once you can understand your risk tolerance, which we have this sort of risk profile sheet we use, right? We kind of break it down. We ask you some very material questions. We find what your risk tolerance is, and then we find a strategy that is realistic for you, or we find an opportunity that is real. Certain games do not fit into low risk profile dynamics, right? Certain games are higher risk for higher risk profiles, right? So there's different ways to play at the casino that, and different games maybe that you would enjoy if you just knew, if you just got in touch with yourself a little better. And, and I have found very often that, again, the buyer's remorse, the gambler's remorse at a casino really comes from playing outside of their comfort zone. 
whatever that case is. In some cases, it's someone that's looking for, I, I know I have a friend of mine that the minute he plays a low rank game, like he, he, he would just, he wants to maximize, he wants to go for the big fat progressive. He wants to play the Wheel of Fortune machines or the Megabucks machines. That's, that's all he wants. That's the only thing that gives him satisfaction at the casino. And then when his wife pulls him away into these other types of tables with some smaller wins, Again, he has buyer's remorse. Now, then, and on the flip side of that, those of you that are looking for just you know payback, you're looking to grind time, you're, you're looking to either play a machine or play a game where you break even or you can play for longer periods of time. How depressing is it? We go to the casino, we sit down for 10 minutes, we lose all our money, and now we're left with nothing to do. That is another case of buyer's remorse. We, we've played the wrong table with the wrong money, the wrong strategy you follow. Like We, we have not empowered ourselves to make, to maximize our casino experience, you see? Uh, and, that, and that's really what the bridge is all about. Okay, the next thing is identify. Okay, now, identify is not so much identifying the goal, it's, it, it's to identify the experience that we're looking to lean into. So we, we wanna understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish, right? Are we there to just play? And when I say just play, I mean spend some time, enjoy the time, socialize, just play the game. I want to pass two hours. I got two hours. I want to spend some time. Am I looking to win at the casino, right? Am I, again, am I looking to, to, to grind time? Now, there are ways that we can find. There's machines we can find. There's tables that we can find that are focused on small wins to optimize our time. There are other machines and tables that are optimized for bigger wins that lean into maximizing the wins and going for that goal where, hey, we want to double our money. We want to triple our money. And when we look at identify, right, the, the other part of this equation is understanding the favorable conditions and the promotions that might be built to maximize the value of our experience. So a lot of times, different casinos, different strategies, all of it plays into creating this experience and understanding this experience. And we have something called a bridge opportunity deck where we help you to kind of identify, you know, what it is. And, and by the way, people go to the experience and they identify different things at different times. So, so I sometimes go to grind time. Sometimes I go with my friends. Uh, and, and if I go with my friends I'm look, and I'm looking for a social experience, I want an experience where I, have to be, I don't have to be too invested in the game. It doesn't require too much focus. This type of thing, if I'm going for wins, obviously, more focus. You follow this, there's all these parts of the equation. And so we have, in, in, with our workbook, we have this opportunity deck so that when you know that you're going to grind time, listen, these are the places, these are the table, this is the experience you want, right? Uh, when you're going to create wins and you want to maximize your wins, then, then this is how you identify that experience, okay? Next is... Without a doubt, destination. I know many of you, uh, you know, have an understanding of the destination, but but again, too often people come to Vegas, and this is a walking town. This is a walking town. So you come to Vegas. It's crazy how disloyal hotel patrons are. So so many hotels. Now a lot of you will will kind of take the elevator, go downstairs, and play at the casino you're staying at. But too often. The problem for the casino is getting you to stay at the casino and play. But, you know, Vegas is a walking town. So here's what happens. You, you, you roll out of bed. You go eat. You start walking down the strip. And you, may, you enter this casino, enter that casino, find a table, find a slot machine, do whatever. Now, what we would like you to do is, again, this is, this is all about the bridge. You know, once you plug in the bridge, destination is, 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 is a key, is, is part of that bridge. First is game selection, right? We want to find the games that maximize whatever it is that we're trying to do. Different games have, have different rules, have different types of bets, have different minimums, maximum, whatever the case is. You follow? So, so understanding what games we're looking for. Instead of just randomly finding a game that might, might not suit any of our needs, we want to look at what the, what the game selection is. Some casinos have better game selection. Some casinos have very specific games. Some casinos have the most liberal blackjack. Some casinos have the most liberal pie gals. Some casinos have whatever the case is, have the highest progressives. Or some casinos have this fast win slot machines that literally have lower, lower top line payoffs, uh, but are literally there for you to spend time. Now, here's one that a lot of people miss is the atmosphere. Okay, the atmosphere of the casino. The atmosphere of the casino is a big one in my book. I can't even tell you how excited, 
you know, one of the casinos in town I used to absolutely love, well, the, the Dunes and Bally's were the two casino floors I really enjoyed playing table games uh, because it was just so exciting. If you go to Bally's now, you, you basically go into, you step down into the casino floor and then you're just enveloped in this bubble of casino sounds. If you ever get a chance, I, I, I promise you, like, you know, casinos now are built with line of sight and there's, there's other things that play a role in how they're structured. But many, but in the past, you, the Maxim was like this. The, the, the Dunes was famous like this. Of course, Dunes doesn't exist anymore. But basically, you would step into the casino pit. That's why it was a casino pit. And the sounds and the ambiance and the atmosphere was so conducive to just being in the best of moods to gamble. And atmosphere, I think, plays a bigger role in some cases for me. Uh, and a lot of people just don't, don't think about that. They, you know, they they focus on other other parts of the equation. But but atmosphere, I promise, will, will plays a role. Okay, a next one for destination is loyalty programs. I mean, sometimes losing can be winning, right? So if we have a loyalty program that we can plug into, and different casinos have different loyalty programs that feed into different dynamics in the casino. Some are more favorable to table game players. Some are more favorable to slot players, and so forth and so on. So depending upon the games and the experience you're looking for, understanding the loyalty program is important. The next one is uh, location access. So access is big. Now, I say access is big only because it relieves stress. Uh, and you know, if, you're, if you find a hotel with the casino that has the games, the game selection, the loyalty program, all that, that you can just sort of roll out of bed go downstairs and there's the table there's the experience you're looking for that that's a win that that's a big win you know because it saves you time saves you anxiety you know what i mean uh that kind of thing and now we're looking at limits uh so obviously limits don't be playing on a 50 dollars table with 50 dollars, right uh because then you only have one billet and that's not a system that's just you donating your money to the casino unless you get ridiculously lucky so we want to look for the tables the machines the casino that offers the right table limits. And here's the thing. If you're someone that's looking for opportunity on the win side, guess what? You're gonna wanna make sure you're looking at what those maximum table limits are. If you go to a table and they have a $500 limit, guess what? You can only win $500 on that bet. Now that might sound to you like, holy crap, Dave, but I would love to have a $500 bet, but that's the whole point of bridge. If you're looking to maximize the wids, we want to show you how to truly maximize the wids. If you're not afraid and your risk profile supports it and you're really looking to win, well, guess what? You want a table with a $5,000 limit, even a $10,000 limit. And we have taught people, by the way, we have someone recently who played our GM spin, won $60,000 for the first time in his life. In fact, won more than 10000 in one session for the very first time. Gave him the chance to either break even or win. And, 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 and again, it's a lot about mentality. This is the bridge. The bridge is about connecting the player to the realism of what it is they're trying to accomplish. If you're coming to Vegas to win money, and you haven't gone through our bridge workshop, you are leaving money on the table. It's as simple as that. But once you do and you find this new comfort level to give yourself a chance to win, well, guess what? You can win. There's lots of opportunity. I'm not, I'm not saying you're gonna win. I'm not saying the machines are like an ATM machine, but you going through the bridge, you understanding the destination, you putting all of the acronym together will help you be a better gambler. It's just that simple. We've had many people, by the way, for the first time in their life, instead of winning, like this, by the way, this, this last customer who is a GM spin, who, who played the GM spin, you know, they, they would come with a thousand bucks, maybe $2,000 and split it up in a few sessions, you know, this type of thing. And they would always play this sort of low rent chasing out of the pocket system. Well, we fixed that. You know what I mean? We, we, we gave them a system to either leave your money or win. You know what I mean? Like if, if you're coming to me and you want to win, well, here's how you win. This is the game you got to play. This is the strategy you need to play. This is the opportunity that you have to win. And so you got to let it go. You, you got to let it go. And so when you let it go and you just follow the program, you give yourself a chance to win. And by the way, that, that's not even, that's not one of one. That's one of many. We have another, we have another couple of people. One went to the Venetian, another woman won 12 grand for the first time. You know, we have had quite a few winners who have, uh, you know, won a lot of money. 
by 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 following what is essentially is the bridge but 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 has followed our instruction so on the destination side so promos is is big too so you can sync up your you know let's say you find a table game very specifically uh, some casinos will have prom uh, promotions events tournaments that are around a specific game or even a specific slot machine this type of thing and you can very often just sort of sync up your experience with that adds a whole nother level of engagement, a whole nother level of excitement. Uh, and that's another way that you can sort of maximize the destination parts of it. After destination, now we want to go to, we want to go to goal. And then here's where we get to, you know, what very specifically is the goal. This is where we quantify the goal. The goal, if, if your goal is time and it's a more social, casual environment, which would also be time, now the goal is a grind. The goal is grind. Now we just want to lose as little, uh, as a little bit of money as slowly as possible to meet this need for time, right? If your goal is to two x your money, three x your money, four whatever the case is, you know what? You need to narrow down what the strategy, what the destination is, what the game is. There are some games, by the way, do do not that they 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 aren't for you. If you're trying to triple your money. The, the, the game is not, there are some games that are not for you. Man, I, I, I would introduce to you a, a few dynamics. Roulette, for example, this is the comparison I make between roulette and craps very quickly. If you're someone who's just trying to 3x, 4x, and 5 and I'm going to get some hate for this, but if you're a roulette player, roulette is for hedging systems. Those are the systems that we found, not only hedging systems, but systems that can recover quickly from their losses. To where you put out 100 to win 20, 30 bucks, whatever the case is, uh, and then if you lose the 100 bucks, you only need two or three wins by hedging again to kind of get back to even. If you're playing a system where you're in $900 to win $10 and you're thinking that that's, and then, you know, because if you lose one $900 bet, which we had a system that we had on our channel, by the way. And we have, you know, and, and, and again, when we have these systems on, on the CG Dealer School channel, we tell you your results may vary. Just keep in mind we're YouTubers, right? So it's not not every system is an ATM system. In fact, none of them are. Okay, so we put out a system and we tell you, you know, th this is covers 86% of the board or whatever. But there's still 14% of the board that can screw you over, right? And those of you that that get screwed over understand that that's on you. <laughs> yeah, you haven't followed the bridge. Yeah, and if you have, now, you followed the bridge if you went and lost that money and you're okay with it and you've moved on to other things. But if you have buyer's remorse, if it didn't fit your profile, you know, that's, that's because you didn't take the time to truly understand what it is you were getting into. And that is so often is what happens in Vegas. You know, we do the systems on roulette you know, where the zero, double zero is not part of it. And guess what? You sit down at the table, you're in all your money, and here's what comes, zero and double zero, three in a row. Whatever the case is, you know, that's a worst case scenario, of course, right? So roulette is a game that functions a certain way. And, and why does it function a certain way? Because we've been dealing it for decades. Every dealer will tell you the same exact thing. If you're literally, if you have the tarot cards or you can pick numbers and you can just straight up bet, you know, roulette, God bless you. You know what I mean? I mean, you're, try not to win too much money, draw too much because it, casinos are still private property. They can decide, listen, they don't want you at your property. So if you literally walk into a, a casino and you're able to uh, predict the next six numbers to, to come out of that roulette wheel the casino may be like eh, you know i'm not sure we want this person to play like you know somehow they've gone you know they have some magical power you follow uh and and again private property they can decide you know who they want to host at their property now what you should be doing is playing a thousand to win a hundred or playing a thousand to win two hundred or even getting Double your money isn't all that unrealistic with some systems, okay? Uh, but understanding, you know, when to leave and this type of thing and how not to chase, that's, that's a roulette game, okay? And there's ways to play roulette successfully. There's a lot of ways to play roulette successfully. There is ways to optimize the whole roulette experience, finding an SR wheel, playing at limit, you know, the old, all these, find the casino with the right loyalty programs, the right promotions. There's, there's lots of ways. Uh, Alex is constantly looking for ways to maximize his SR or roulette experience. And we have two casinos in town that we've identified that are literally the best places to play roulette here in town. Now, if you're playing craps and you're trying to one X your money, you will never get ahead of the craps curve. You, you just can't. Why do I know you can't? Because I've been dealing craps for 34 years. I've been involved with this game. I have talked to every single. You're going to get lucky, maybe. 
But for those of you that have, have sat and experienced 30 rolls uh, on a crap table, let's say at a $15 game, and you didn't win more than three or $4,000, even on a $500 table, guess what? You left a lot of money, and you know you left a lot of money on the table. You, you do. You just know you left a lot of because craps works very differently. Craps is a game that you can 5X and 10X. Craps is a game that you can go for the juggling. Now, for those of you that are sitting down and looking to grind some time, you know what a good game is? Pie Gal is a great game. There's also ways to play Baccarat where you can grind, you can grind a lot of time. There's ways to play Baccarat where you, be, you can just play very aggressively. There's ways to play Blackjack to grind time, and there's ways to play Blackjack very aggressively. In fact, there's tables with certain side bets that if you really want to max out your potential, you can play. There are so many ways and so many things at the casino that you can find that meet various goals. But first, you have to understand what your goal is, right? You have to understand what your goal is, and it has to play into everything else that we have sort of spelled out in the bridge. And once you get to this equation, now you can better understand what's the goal. What's the goal, okay? Now, once you've identified your personal goals, the next part of it is, is you know, the, the value part, you know, which we've covered to some degree. And, and, and value comes with finding favorable conditions. You know, like we talked about a little earlier, finding the promotions, the tournaments, the players' rewards, and this type of thing, all right? Then we get to goal tiers, and this is a fantastically overlooked area of goals. It's okay to have new goals. When we hit our goals and experience our goals, it's fine to create new goal tiers because that plays into maximizing opportunity or maximizing experience. Now, you don't have to have any gold tiers if you want to. If you're looking, if it's just about time and you met your time, if you've done your social thing and you've met your goal, get the hell out. You got nothing more to do. But if you're about maximizing the experience, you want to maximize the win, you have gold tiers. Now, here's how the gold tiers work. Now, don't be a hater, but I'm going to use a keynote story for you that's happened a couple times already. I go to the casino with my money to light on fire is exactly 140. It used to be 140. Sometimes it's 200 bucks, okay? But I go with money I literally can light on fire. And 140 is because I play 100 on one game, and then I play a 40 on the other game, and then when I leave, I leave. Okay. Now, what I do is I start at a five-cent machine, sometimes even a two-cent machine if I really want to get some time in. If I'm, if I'm going to just, my first goal is time. I want to be able to play for an hour. And I know that if I start on a 50-cent machine or a quarter machine or dollar machine, it could be 10 minutes. So if I know I want to spend an hour or two hours, I got to start in the lowest denomination possible. But here's what I do. In my head, I have two goals. One is time. The other is a new goal tier. So what I say to myself is if I double my money, if I take this 140 and I get to 300 actually, a little more than double my money, I go up a denomination. I will let myself go up a denomination because remember, I'm there to light that money on fire. And as long as I'm, I'm comfortable knowing that I'm going to be there for the two hours or whatever I need to relax, you see? I create this new gold tier. So what happened recently is this happened recently. I, I started at two cents. I won a few hundred dollars. By the way, this is on our CQ Slot channel. This is, this is truth. This is absolute fact. We've shared it with the whole world. Started with two cents, went to five cents, hit for 44,000 nickels. Yeah, for those of you, I think it's $2,200, $2,200, give or take. Hit for 44,000 nickels, you see? Because I created this new gold tier and I just kept going. And, and when I hit for the five cents, guess where I ended up? I ended up in high limit. You're absolutely right. So what I said to myself is, well, I was far beyond. So my first, my first gold tier was the 300 just to go up increment of another unit. Instead of playing two cents, I played five cents. Then once I hit that 2200, the hand pay, of course, $1,000 is my cash out. So basically, give or take 10 times. I mean, 1400 would be 10 times. But you know, when I get to $1,000, I put $1,000 in the pocket and I sometimes will play the extra. And, and the reason why I said it a thousand, because very often I'll hit for like 1100, 1200, not that often, but when I do, and that seems to be like the sweet spot that I hit, okay? Now this time I had won 2200. So what I did was I put $2,000 in my pocket and I took $200 to go to high limit and guess what, lost it. I lost it and we left. But, but it gets better about a week later, I go to Green Valley Ranch, uh, Green Valley Station here in, here in Vegas. I'm playing on a quarter machine, and I hit 
for fourteen hundred bucks because I got I got my envelope system, which we include in our worksheet, by the way. I've got my envelope system, so now my envelope is fat because some of the winnings I put in my envelope so I can play more during the month, something like this, so I keep my budget. But I got my envelopes are big and fat, so I take one of my fat envelopes the next week over to GVR. And this time around, I'm starting with a $300 bankroll. Congratulations. On Keno, for God's sake. I put my $300 in the machine, and guess what I hit? I hit for $1,450. I actually just, it was a machine I've been playing forever, $1,450. Now, here's what I did. I took, I was actually, at that point, I was actually had $1,500 because I, I, I was only in a little, I wasn't in all my money. I put my $1,000 in my pocket, which worst case scenario, I leave plus 700, you see? I take the 500, it's like $550. I go over, march myself over to high limit. I sit down at a dollar machine and I'm playing, just playing five spots, a five spot. It's gonna pay me $832, something like this. Guess what? I hit a five spot, nice and easy. Just 832, out the gate, now I've got 1300 to spend. Now, for some of you who are like, holy smokes, David, I would have just gotten out of the casino. No, no, I'm in gold tier mode. I know I got to get ahead of all the money I lost in all the years prior. I want to build this baby up to no return. So listen, I'm going to be out of the casino with plus 700, what's in my pocket. That's locked up. That's not coming out. I got my left pocket's my exit pocket. My right pocket is my buy-in pocket, and I'm just going to buy in. I'm going to keep buying in. I press my bet. I go to an $8 bet. $8 bet. Anyways, the long story is I, I ended up winning $7,500 that day because I created these new gold tiers. I kept moving the goalpost. I kept playing into this strategy of winning and optimizing my experience. Listen, it's going to happen. It's going to happen to you. And if you give yourself a chance, you can win a ton of money and create that experience that most of us have been looking for. David's had a few of them. I have won $48,125 on a crap table. I have won $44,000 in hand pays over two days, by the way. And if you ask me how I did it, guess how I did it? Gold tears. Also, just having a risk tolerance that quite literally is off the charts. So you're looking at someone who at one point in his life was homeless. And so, like, I just put it all out there, dude. Me and me and my, by the way, my business partner, Alex, we kind of do the same, dude. We, we, we're, our risk tolerance is high. We're happy to accept risk and just, you know what I mean? As my mother says, uh, you know, let go and let God kind of thing. And that's kind of the experience that I have at the casino very often, okay? But I have to stay disciplined. Remember, exit goal. You got to have an exit goal. You got to know when to leave. And but that means not just saying to yourself, well, I'm disciplined. And when I have enough money, I'm going to go. No, no. Have an amount in your head. Have an amount in your head. Have an amount in your head. <laughs> you got to leave when you win. You can't always leave it at the casino because you got to pay for the next time. You got to have money to come back. You can have that extra. Sometimes, some days, not for you. The universe is not calling. You got to be willing to exit. Now, I used to have a really, really difficult time leaving the casino with a profit. You have no idea. One day, I won almost $5,000 on a slot machine, and I was so convinced, winning all these little hits, $5,000, and this was at a time when I could have really used the money. Now, I was only in like 200 bucks, so in my head, I'm like, well, I'm only in $200, all I could lose. I chased that machine back the entire 5,000. I stayed for six, seven hours. I was so convinced that I was gonna hit this other thing. I don't know what got into me, to be honest with you. I, I, to this day, I still have remorse about it. It still sort of triggers me. And uh, you gotta have an exit goal. So literally after that day, what I used to do is I would have one of these little sticky envelopes. Uh, and, and I would, when I won, I would take the envelope with me, fold it up, put it in my pocket. And when I won money, I would put it in there, uh, unstick it, and just, I, you know, because I couldn't have, it, it couldn't be an envelope that I can open. Now, granted, it's just a paper envelope. I can just rip it and break into it. Not a big deal. But something about the adhesive, you know what I mean? That the fact that it was, it was sticky closed and I didn't want to break the seal. And, and that would be like a cardinal sin type of thing. And so I would leave it in the envelope. And that's how I got the hell out of it. Because I would literally have to take one of those with me. The good news is I would make it home. And then at home, I started this whole envelope system for you know what my buy-ins would be and you know then my profits and then whatever else and i got myself a safe with a little a little a little box with a little slit in it you know what i mean 
And, and so in went the extras. And I, 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 even to this day, I don't touch. No touchy. I leave it in there. That's for, that's for end of times kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And, and by the way, every time you see this blue where it says like bridge workbook, this is all, it's all part of our, our bridge stuff. These are resources that we have available in our workshop. The last one, and we're, we're getting towards the end, is emotion. And this is the one that eludes most people. And I, and I have to tell you, I'm a very emotional player. Uh, I've identified games that I just simply can't play because I get too emotionally invested in the game. It's just that simple, right? Uh, but, but, but having awareness of our emotions is very key. Uh, and knowing how to set sort of emotional ba- boundaries. And very often, uh, a casino environment is a very emotional thing. There's a lot of excitement going on. There's a lot of cheering. By the way, those are the people that are winning, right? You know, what we don't hear is the soft, whimpering cries of people that are losing, right? And, you know, the divorce paperwork that's being shuffled around as people are just, you know, giving up, uh, you know, their homes and their equity and their credit cards and this kinds of things. You follow? And as a dealer, I've watched all of it. And what I have found always, not, not always, is, well, maybe always, is uh, most people just lack emotional awareness. They put themselves into this environment. They start drinking. They start, you know, getting into the flow of things. Or, or maybe they're in a peer group and the peer group is like, dude, you know, get you to play at a level you're not comfortable. Get you to bet in a way that you're not comfortable. Get you even to play a game that you know nothing about, this type of thing. So having emotional awareness is, is absolutely uh, key in setting boundaries for yourself. Now, we tell you, and it's very easy, you, wanna, you, you can't chase the losses. Vegas is not for you. And, and you have to find a way to discipline yourself because chasing losses or chasing besides the money you're going to light on fire, the bankroll that you came with, the budget, the strategy, the, the, the bridge. You come with the bridge, you leave with the bridge. That's it. You come with the bridge, you leave with the bridge. That's it. Okay, we don't want you chasing your losses. There's there's no wins there because the minute you start chasing your losses, you're you're diminishing your ability to return because now you're coming in more and more money playing what's probably the same system. I mean, realistically, if you lose one thousand with one system, guess what? You should play two thousand with a bigger system to make back the thousand and net yourself a win. But by doing so, other, AKA the martingale, right? You're just setting yourself up for bigger and bigger failures. And now you're falling outside of the realm of what is entertainment. It's supposed to be entertainment that has opportunity. And the further you move away from entertainment and value and fun, the further you get to depression and gambler's remorse and this whole other experience that wasn't the point in the first place. Now, here's one that um, chasing wins. And this is a little bit backwards. I'm, I'm, I see I, I, it's chasing, chasing wins. I've done it. I've done it, done it. And it's a terrible way to get even more depressed. Can you imagine? You find yourself winning a ton of money and then you give it all back because you have no exit goal. You give it all back because you lack emotional awareness. You have not created boundaries for yourself. You've not disciplined yourself. You've not set yourself up to realize the wins. You got to realize the wins. You got to get out when the getting is good. Once you get to one of those go tiers, gold tiers, have the emotional awareness. Recognize where you're at, what you're doing. Step back, breathe if you need to. Don't be so engrossed. Don't be so immersed in the moment that you can't pull back and you can't make a good decision. It goes without, without saying alcohol and impairment. Uh, obviously, you know, loosening you up, getting you in a state where you're more apt to lose your money is a thing. So here... here don't put yourself in that scenario. There's lots of ways to enjoy the game completely wasted. There are certain games you can play. Pie Guy you can play with probably without risking too much. You follow because, you know, if the deal is helping you or your friends are helping you. But if you're, if you're there to win and you're playing a strategy that requires a lot of communication, a lot of, a lot of knowledge of the game, a lot of, inf- you know, a lot of information, I mean, you got to you got to stay away from the alcohol or you have to drink in in absolute moderation so it's not impairing your judgment. Now the next one is celebrating the win and the losses, right? So it's easy, we recognize, hey, when we win, we get excited a uh, 100% of the thing, but but very often what's missed is, you know, you celebrate the losses too. And that's a way to walk away from a game is like, hey, I had a lot of fun. 
I lost my money. I had a lot of fun. Let me go check the player's card, see how many points I got. Let's go, let's go get something to eat. It's okay to lose. It's fine to lose. It's not you against them. It's just you against you. And it's okay to celebrate the losses. And, and the wins are, you know, I, I got points. I had a great time. I'm out with my friend and my girlfriend, my boyfriend, whatever the case is. And that's a win too. So th there's lots of ways we can celebrate the entire spectrum of gambling. So for those of you that are in it to win it and maximize your experience, or you're just trying to grind time, I, I can't tell you how often you should just literally just take a break, get some separation for the game. If you find yourself on a game for too long, I wish I had told this to myself a long time ago, and I feel like this is one of those, one of those caveats that, that just goes missed. Find yourself in a position to really just give yourself an excuse to go to the bathroom, wash your hands, and breathe. If, if you haven't heard yourself breathe in, in a long period of time, it's time to just step back and just take a breath, take it all in, understand where you're at, assess, evaluate, give yourself a moment to you know, understand the experience, understand the situation. A lot of times we get so caught up, especially if you know we're in that pit, we got, we're in that bubble of gambling, we're drinking, we're talking to our friends, and next thing you know, you know, we're in a situation that's, that's just not acceptable. You know what I mean? Or, or we've, we, we've gone to a point, we've gone too far, we've exceeded our boundaries. Okay. Uh, here it comes down to, this is the checklist. All right. So we've gone through the bridge and now we got this really quick checklist on, on how to engage. So the first thing is you got to plan your visit, right? Clearly. You bring cash. Don't bring a credit card. Don't bring anything that you can swipe at the cashier's chain, put an ATM machine. Just bring your cash. Leave every, Don't bring the credit card with you up on a casino floor if you can help it. I know some people need an emergency credit card, but too, too often that emergency credit card becomes their emergency buy-in or the emergency chase and becomes something else completely. So whenever possible, or we, we would just tell you, listen, just leave the credit card back. Don't, get, don't put it in any, any position where... You know, you can get it. In fact, I'll be honest. Like when I used to come to Vegas, when I when I didn't live in Vegas, I lived in Louisiana. Or I lived. I would I would I would not play at the same casino I stayed at because I didn't want my credit cards literally up in the room. That was too close for me. So I would literally stay at one hotel, walk my ass way down the street to another hotel, and I would gamble there. And that way, when I lost my money, I couldn't just run up to my room. I had to walk my ass back. And by the time I got fresh air and breathed and took in everything and walked my ass back to the hotel. Guess what? I was out of the, I was emotionally disconnected. I was able to go home to my room and just do something else. So, and by the way, if you recognize that about you, do that. That's actually a really good, that, that's, that's something to have on your checklist. I don't want to gamble where I'm staying. A lot of hotels are going to hate me sharing this because they all want you to gamble where you stay. But if you're someone who can succumb to the wallet upstairs, guess what? Make sure your wallet's not upstairs. Make sure you're gambling somewhere where you can't get to the credit cards quickly. Okay. Uh, I only have the cash I need. We did that. Obviously, you need a valid ID to play. Make sure to have a valid ID because even if you look old enough, if you win enough money, uh, they may check your ID uh, for lots of different reasons. They want to make sure, maybe not make sure that you're not laundering money. You know, if you win 20000 one casino, walk to another casino next, you're buying in for 20000 Guess what? You got paperwork to do, even though you didn't necessarily have to report it, whatever the case. They want to know that you got it and you won it fairly and you're not there to launder money. If you win more than 1200 or 1200 or more on a slot machine, guess what? You got to fill out some paperwork. If you win more than 300 to 1 on a, on a, on a, on a table game, Guess what? You got to fill out some paperwork and you're going to need ID or you're going to get booted from the property. Now, if you don't have your ID and you do hit a slot machine, you just have to come back with your ID, valid ID. They will make sure. So, so don't be afraid. If you hit a slot machine, you hit a big jackpot, $5,000, they'll just, they'll hold it for you. And then you can, you have a chance to get your ID and come back, but they won't pay you until they have a valid ID. Okay. So here's a smart money checklist. Okay. You know, your budget again, you tell yourself you're not chased. Listen, don't just check it off the list. You know what I mean? You, you, you have to establish things that give you discipline. Now, some of us are more disciplined than others, but me, I need the checklist. I need a way for me to recognize, listen, I will not chase. In fact, before I go to play Keno sometimes, I'll go take Dennis with me. He, he says, I have to tell him, listen, I will not chase. You know what I mean? And he'll hold my money. He'll hold my money and, and, I, and I won't chase because... I sometimes will chase. I sometimes will chase. I lack the emotional discipline sometimes, and that's why I bring Dennis with me because Dennis keeps me safe. You know what I'm saying? So some of us, we got to bring someone with us.
to keep us safe and remind us of our, our checklist. Now, the other one is I have a plan. You gotta have a plan. If you really wanna maximize a create experience, I mean, it doesn't matter, whatever level it is, you should have a plan. You should have a plan of where to go, what to play, what your goals are, you follow, you gotta have a plan. And then you gotta know when to exit. And this is something that's often missed. A player comes to a casino, they don't know when to exit. They're either chasing their losses or chasing their wins or whatever the case is. But you gotta, you gotta acknowledge, you gotta check off, I know when to exit. A lot of this goes without seeing, but it's good to remind us you, you, you should be in a positive mindset. Don't go to the casino depressed. The, the casino is not for depressed people. You might get depressed when you start losing, but don't start out depressed, okay? Uh, because that, that's not a way to engage. You, you really, this has to be an entertainment venue for you, and that means you go with this very positive, exciting mindset. This isn't a, this isn't a, this isn't a place to play off uh, your, you know, your, your bad tidings, your bad, you don't want to, to let losing money fuel into or feed into all this other negative energy. When I say losing money, let, let's just be honest, okay? As much as there's, there's no course in the world that guarantees you wins, there's a course in the world like ours that will help you maximize the wins and have a better experience, and, and, and that's really all there is to it. And, 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 and again, you do not want to feed negative energy with more negative energy that comes from losing money, okay? And then understanding that you should take breaks. You shouldn't be bellied up to a crap table just drinking alcohol the whole time. That, that's not the definition of staying hydrated, just so you know. You really should be willing to take breaks, give yourself a breather, push the table back and let go. And then maintaining emotional and physical awareness, you know, understanding your body. I, I've had people who haven't had physical awareness on the table. I've had dealers without physical awareness on the table. And it, it's not a good look. It's just not a good look. Uh, if you're wearing diapers to a crap table, stop that. That's not for you. Go, go play some other game. Uh, but anyway, so there's that. You'd be surprised. A lot of people, you, you wonder, how did this person, uh, how was this person able to stay at the crap table for eight hours? Well, you know what I mean? Eight hours, okay? Especially if they're my age. And you know, you know what happens at my age. That's just not a thing. All right. Now, you ready? This is what makes Vegas rich, Okay. <laughs> Literally, I mean, besides the lack of emotional awareness and people getting too addicted to the games or whatever else, but this is what really, it's the most amazing thing. And, and by the way, when I teach dealers, I don't teach dealers to fix all of the player mistakes. No. A lot of players will belly up to game. They bet a certain way. They don't know a damn thing about what they're doing. And they're just giving their way about the casino. And you know what the dealer is there to do? Smile and provide a customer, you know, a customer experience. It's not for us as dealers. Now it's up for me to teach you, okay? Cause I wanna teach you, but dealers won't teach you. If you think that by giving them tips, now you might get some favoritism and they might help you with the bet. But if you think that dealer is going to help you win or give you advice, if you walk up to a blackjack table, they're gonna tell you basic strategy. No one gives a crap about basic strategy. There's all the strategies, by the way, to playing your money smartly. If you walk up to a crap table and try to ex ask a dealer, hey, how do I play the game? You know what they're going to do? They're going to show you the way not to play the game because it's the easiest way for them to deal the game to you. They're not going to sit there and explain how the how the odds, they, they might experience how the odds work and they might experience basic bets. There's some really nice, very good, very engaged dealers out there. Don't get me wrong, okay? But they can't give you all the nuances. They're not gonna take the time to understand your risk profile, what your goals are, how much money you have, what kind of bets you're comfortable making. None of those things are true. And in the end, they're just gonna make it as basic as possible and you're gonna run your course in a very simple way. You're not gonna have a lot of opportunity to win. And, and how do I know this? Because I was the guy who used to teach these classes at the casino. This is what became, a, this is why we started Casino Quest. Because we know the casinos are not invested to teach you how to win. They're, they're, gonna, they're invested to teach you how to win, and they're invested in how to teach you how to play fairly. But uh, casinos are not worried about you winning money, by the way. They don't care. You can know every single facet of the game, uh, and, and we can teach you everything there is. No casino on the planet is scared. What they, what they are scared about is if you're a time traveler. If you're a time traveler or you're some kind of weird psychic, then yes, then they're worried about you and they may 86 your ass to the casino. But you playing the game fairly, you, um, you enjoying the game, no one's worried about that. Next one is, so knowing the rules, knowing the rules, right? So we want you to know the rules. You should know the rules of the games you're gonna play. If you don't, you should know all the rules. There's many of the rules that play into your goals as possible. And that means not just having this very basic understanding of I put my money here and wait for something to happen. That, that's not knowing the rules. Knowing the rules is 
you know, what, what's my risk? What's my reward? How do I get paid? What are the nuances? What are the side bets? All these things play, play a factor. Now, knowing etiquette can also be on a crap table. You should know etiquette because people will just get pissed off if you start saying certain words or interacting with the dealer in a way that's rude or slows up the game. If you're sitting on one of the bases on blackjack and you're not exercising the right etiquette, other players won't like you, the dealer won't like you, you don't want to be playing a game where no one likes you, right? So knowing etiquette is crucial to just enjoying the game and having a very positive experience. The next one is communicating my bets and strategies effectively, right? So it's, it's crazy how often the first part of the lesson, especially with advanced players, is listen, where do I find my bets? How do I tell the dealer what to do with my bets? How do I communicate effectively and sort of understanding the numbers? And it's, it's part of the game. It's part of the experience. Now, if you're, if you're drilled down to this idea of just grinding time and very casual experience, now you want less of that. But the more that you are aiming higher, to realize or maximize your rewards at the casino, well, guess what? You have to know the game. And you can't know the game from YouTube videos. You can't know the game from people who just are incentivized to you know, tease you with, oh my God, I can't stop losing at craps, or oh my God, this is the best strategy ever invented. All that is nonsense, that's not a thing, you see? You, you, you have to deconstruct the game, understand how the game works, understand how you work, put it all together, you see? And check off, I can communicate my strategy bets and uh, clearly with the dealer. Okay, the last part of this is really sort of understanding our workshop. So thank you so much for, for getting this far with us. Uh, and, and here's where I introduce uh, the next opportunity for you to do or have this experience live. So we have created uh, our bridge workshop. And uh, why have we done it? Well, this is our team. Our team, those people that you see in that picture have hundreds of years of experience at all levels of the casino environment from the highest level Baccarat pits to the lowest level grinding bird games that I started out in 1991. So we've assembled a fantastic team of dealers and instructors here at the Casino Training Center, also known as Casino Quest. Uh, we also have the resources here. So this facility is 10,000 square feet. This is a picture of our sort of elite lounge area. Uh, this is us uh, teaching uh, roulette. This is me and Alex with a group of us. And here is sort of the, the rest of our facility. So our facility supports probably 200, 250 people pretty comfortably. We have more than 30 tables in this space. And then we have an elite area with a number of other tables that we use uh, that, that's much more, uh, you know, uh, dampered down. The, the sound is better, this type of thing. We have a retail area, that type of thing. But here's a facility. Uh, and again, we are the largest school like it, uh, like ours. Uh, CG Dealer School operates out of our facility uh, every, every day, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, we teach the most casino dealers here in Vegas. We teach and graduate more casino dealers than any other school uh, that we know of. And we also are the largest square footage, the largest footprint of a school that we know of at 10,000 square feet. Here's the, here's basically, uh, how it breaks down. So the next, uh, three workshops that we're going to have is January 11th, February 22nd, or March 22nd. Uh, it's going to be here at, at, at our, uh, casino training center. It's 3,100 West Sahara Ave suite 102. And, uh, it, 11 AM, the doors open. We're going to have this continental breakfast starting at noon. Uh, to one, we have a talking seminar. Yours truly, Alex truly. So our team starts by educating you and introducing sort of the workshop as a whole, okay? And we provide you with a number of resources that you're gonna use throughout the workshop. We take a little break and then we go to teach you all the games. So we're gonna teach you blackjack, roulette, baccarat and craps, okay? So we lean into the games that lean into you. Now, some of you might end up on crafts, depending upon how we, are not crafts, but Baccarat, depending upon how we orient the workshop or how it's suited to you. But basically, we take you through the, the workshop, we take you through the workbooks, we put together, we understand your budget, we do a risk profile and all these things. And then we, we do this rotation of the games and clinics on the games that help you teach and educate uh, educate you about the games, okay? Then we, uh, then we end, and then at 5 p.m., we have a free cocktail hour. So we, we have a casino very close to us, Palace Station. 
Very good partners of the school. Station has been a fantastic partner of, uh, of, of Casino Quest, Casino Training Center. And we are, we are if now, it, it's, it's completely optional, but you can join Alex and I at Palace Station for a free cocktail hour. Literally for one hour, we're going to have some drinks, have a good time, talk about what we learned, and then end up on the games. Now, once we get to the games, we're hoping that you've used the workshop to, again, maximize your experience. And at the very least, you're going to leave us with all the empowerment you need to have a better experience in the future. Now, the experience you have with us, you know, may be a separate thing, might be its own thing, because obviously you're with us, Alex and, um, Alex and myself. But this should inform you. One, one, of the, one, of the, one of the greatest things that'll be part of this, you're, you're, you're also going to get, besides the workbook itself, is you're gonna have a, a number of resources that you'll be able to take with you and use each time you go to the casino. One of them is a budget and wins log. So you'll be able to understand you know, what your wins are, keep track of your wins, and do it in a way that's very material to how you bet. Okay, so uh, we got some, I got some bonuses. So if you come to our workshop, you're gonna get a receipt. So when you, when you book your reservation at casinoquest.biz, I forgot to put that on the thing, but it's casinoquest.biz, Look for the bridge workshop for the date that you want to come, okay? And when you get a receipt, you're going to get a, a room discount up to 25% off at any station property. So right there, if you stay for a couple days, there's a lot of your money back. You're also going to get one of our casino training center lanyards. You're, we're going to open 11 o'clock with a free food, and it, it's basically a continental spread, but, but a cold spread. So we, we can't cook hot food here. It's going to be snacks and Danishes and muffins and some and you know sodas, waters, drinks, coffee, tea, that kind of thing. Uh, you also get the bridge workbook that comes in and with, that has the risk profile, logbook, and references. And then of course you get the free cocktail party with Alex and David. Now here's it is where 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 the introductory price is going to be. If you book before December fifteenth, it's a hundred bucks per person all in. And we're doing this at $100, by the way, which we think we're giving you a ton of value uh, just so that we can really videotape it, engage the audience, and, and so that you guys can walk away with the best possible experience and share that. We want you to share it with the world. Whatever the truth is, we want you to share it, and that's how always we've operated. So this is an introductory price for $100 per person. If you book with us before December 15th, afterwards it's going to be $150 per person. And there is one of the groups that we took uh, to Palace the other day. So uh, we really hope you look us up. The booking is casinoquest.biz. Again, it's casinoquest.biz. Look for the Bridge Workshop. And, and thank you so much for being on this journey with us. I hope you join us uh, for our next workshop. And uh, take care.